Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today is the five year anniversary of me starting these daily videos. So I've literally done 1825 daily videos in a row for you. And uh, in celebration of this five year anniversary, well, first of all, I'm almost at 40,000 subscribers on YouTube alone. Got over 11 or 12,000 on Facebook, 6,000 on Instagram. If you are not yet a subscriber on YouTube, go over to dansyoutube.com and hit the red subscribe button. Help me get the next several hundred to get over the, uh, the 40,000 mark. So, in celebration of the five year mark of daily videos, 1,825 videos in a row daily. Uh, I really wanted to do a massive mindset video for you because mindset is king. Mindset is really where it's at. Um, so I got my glasses on because I'm going to do a little reading here. But uh, first thing on the mindset is freak out less. You know, you've probably heard me say nobody ever got better by freaking out. And that's the absolute truth. It's hard, but I can assure you that freaking out just continues to confirm the brain's per perception of danger. And so that will delay recovery. So freak out less. I used to say, stop freaking out. But then people would say, oh, I freaked out. I'm never going to get better because I keep on freaking out. So freak out less. That's attainable. The next thing is calm confidence. Just really... Trust that you're in the right place, that this is going to work for you. Have that calm confidence. And I really want everybody to really stop figuring it out, stop analyzing, stop tracking, and really create a focus on safety. Your mindset is safety. Um, indifference. This is a tough one to attain, but it's achievable for all. And I think it's an extremely powerful mindset to really teach your brain that you're okay. Indifference kind of looks like, oh, well, whatever. So what? Don't care. Now, a lot of people go, Dan, you're crazy. Of course I care. Yes, I know you do. But over time, indifference will become more organic and authentic. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So it's important to start cultivating that attitude of indifference because if you're always walking around complaining, thinking about trying to fix, it's going to be harder to get to indifference. So really make a decision that says, you know what, I know what's going on, so I really don't care. So, and that's the next point, clarity. You know, really understand what creates symptoms, the perception of danger, and then do the assessments. Is this pdp.com? Find out for yourself whether or not perceived danger is creating your symptoms. Because once you know that, it's really important for you to calmly be confident about the fact that perceived danger is the only thing going on and your body's actually not involved. Your body is fine. I'm going to really encourage you to make a decision to accept TMS, perceived danger pain, as the cause, perceived danger symptoms as your cause of what's going on with you. And that decision will start to foster and create more belief. Now, for those people who say, I don't know, Dan, I'm not believing 100%. This isn't going to work for me. You don't need 100% to start. The belief will grow over time. The more you implement these concepts, the belief will grow. I can assure you of that because you're going to start to see, wow, I responded really calmly with confidence, almost indifference, and my symptoms went down. Guess what happened to your belief? Just went up. So that decision to accept the mind-body cause of pain will massively increase your belief. You know, one of the concepts I talk about is just a mindset of, I'm good, I'm good, I got this. Hey, brain, thanks, but no thanks. I got this. I'm good, right? It's just a general mindset you can adopt. Um, you know, at some point, you're going to develop this, what I call the holy crap moment. 
that final realization that says, wow, I'm really okay. I'm not broken. I'm not mental. I'm not sick. I'm not broken. I just have a brain that's operating on misinformation and fear. So that holy crap moment will hit for all of you. And it's a wonderful time. Embrace it. Don't second guess it. Embrace it. Um, also take on the mindset. This is all temporary. I'm on the right track. I'm in the right place. I've got the right guidance. And I am the right person to implement it. So I know that these symptoms are going to go away. I'm going to get better. Another mindset that you can adopt is when you wake up in the morning, instead of going, oh no, how bad is today going to be? You can actually take on the mindset of, how much fun can I have today? You know that sounds ridiculous for people who are really struggling. But I can assure you that if you ask your brain, how much fun can I have today? Your brain's particular active <clears throat> activating system is going to start looking for things that are fun another mindset relax i'm not broken i don't have to figure it out i'm not broken just got to teach this overprotective brain that i'm actually okay another mindset emotions are normal emotions are safe a lot of us were raised being taught that emotions are bad. They make you a bad person. They make you weak if you're sad. They make you crazy or out of control if you're angry. No. Take on the mindset that emotions are normal. They're perfectly safe. And I do encourage you to feel them as they occur. I don't think we have to dig up the old stuff. I think if the old stuff is still active and bothering you, you're going you're gonna to become aware of that emotion right now. So the mindset is emotions are normal. And they're safe. So, another mindset. Stress is not the problem. We can have life stress. Family stress. Financial stress. Relationship stress. Even stress of dealing with some symptoms. Take on the mindset that stress is not the problem. It's often how we respond to it that can become somewhat troublesome. But stress is not the problem. Life is not the problem. You don't have to get a new life or become a new person. You can be you. Just realize stress is not the problem. Another thing, another mindset is that I don't have to believe all my thoughts. I don't have to take all my thoughts seriously. I don't have to act upon my thoughts. If you know what's going on and you know that your brain is creating the symptoms and you know that actually means your body's okay, then I don't have to believe the thought that says, oh, Dan, maybe you should go back onto Google and research a little bit more. See if you can find this mystery disease that the doctors have all missed. You don't have to believe those thoughts. You can literally go, ah, I'm not thinking about that anymore. And then shift your attention elsewhere. You really don't have to believe your thoughts. We don't have to stop them. We don't have to fix them. But we certainly don't have to believe them and take them seriously. That's the best way to deal with an overactive, overthinking mind is just to go, eh, that thought, I've had that thought thousands of times. I'm not going to repeat that again because it's not true. It's not helping me. I don't need to take it seriously. It's a very freeing mindset. Another mindset is gratitude. You know, so many people are so focused on what am I missing? What's lacking in my life? You know? in a mindset of gratitude to just kind of make it a practice to remind yourself I'm grateful for the little things. And if you don't know what to be grateful for, uh, search YouTube for, you know, gratitude practice or what could I, should I be grateful for. Tons of ideas out there. That's not the topic of this video, but it's a mindset that you can adopt. And when you start to focus on what you've got and what you're grateful for, the stuff that's missing and some of the problems in your life become a little bit less significant. So another mindset is to trust your body. I know for many of you, it feels like your body's betrayed you. But I can assure you, your body knows what to do. Your body knows how to take care of itself. Your body knows how to do everything. Normal stuff. Decent food. 
clean water, take care of yourself reasonably. I'm not saying get crazy nuts about everything, but trust your body. We don't have to micromanage it. It knows how to heal. And frankly, in this mind-body perceived danger world, there's nothing to heal because your body's really not involved. Another mindset, outcome independence. You've heard that bandied around a lot. What that means is, I don't care when this sim these symptoms resolve. I don't care if they resolve, because I know I'm actually okay. Now, I know that last statement probably triggered some people. What do you mean, if? What do you mean, I don't care if they resolve? They will resolve. But outcome independence means today, on a daily basis. Look, we know on the grand scale, we all want these symptoms gone. But on a day-to-day -day basis, take on the mindset of, all right, so I've got symptoms today. I've made it through. I've got a 100% track record of every tough day I've ever had. So today, eh, so what? They're there. I'm going to take an outcome-independent view of today because today is, frankly, the only thing we can really, really participate in. The future is not happening yet, so don't worry about that. But today, an outcome-independent attitude or mindset can be very helpful in getting to the indifference. Like, okay. So I hurt today, I've hurt yesterday, I hurt all those other days before, made it through those days, I'm going to be fine. You may find that this outcome independence feeds very well into the concept or mindset of indifference. So another thing along the lines of, you know, outcome independence is don't watch a calendar. Calendar's not your friend. All the calendar does is put more pressure on you to go, wow, you know what, I found out about this TMS stuff six months ago and I'm still not better. Well, stop watching the calendar. Stop tracking it. You know, definitely not helpful. It just creates more pressure and more fear that, oh my goodness, I've gone two months and I'm still not better yet. Stop watching the calendar, folks. It is not important. I know people who can tell me to the day when their pain started, you know, 12 years ago, right? Not helpful. And that leads us to patience. The mindset of patience. It'll happen when it happens. And you know what? Some people are like, all right, let me just give it more time. And they think, well, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Well, I think it's a matter of doing the right things consistently over time that it will work. But if you're doing a lot of the wrong stuff and making a lot of mistakes and focusing on and fearing and freaking out and all those things, waiting another month is not going to solve the problem if you're still doing things that are counterproductive. So, patience. And that leads into consistency. You know, folks, consistency is really one of the keys. Because if you're freaking out today and then calm tomorrow, don't be angry when you're calm tomorrow. It doesn't work. Because you were just freaking out today. Right? So, consistency matters a lot. So, if you're flopping back and forth between panic and calm and panic and calm, and you're frustrated that you're not better yet, See what you can do to get out of the panic more. Freak out less. Get more consistent with your steady mindset. All these mindset things. Get consistent with it. Right? Decide. Take out a mindset that these symptoms are insignificant. They are creations of a scared brain operating on misinformation and fear. Which means I'm not sick or broken. Which means I don't have to worry about it. Symptoms are insignificant. That's a mindset. Another mindset is live more, fix less. Live more, fix less. Make your priority living your life more. Now, many people have put their lives on hold. And in many cases, look, I'll acknowledge the symptoms are so severe. Living life is challenging. It's hard. It's, in some cases, almost impossible. People are bedridden. But you can live more and fix less, even if you're bedridden. What does that mean? It means read a book, get a sketch pad, draw some, watch some great shows, call a friend. Do things other than sitting there, laying in bed, catastrophizing, and feeling a victim to your life. You have a lot more control over what's going on inside your head and what's going on in your body. And these concepts, which I'm sharing here, are absolutely 
mindset shifts which you can make whether you're in bed or back to activity <coughs> back to activity or uh you know already still working or you know living your life but doing it with pain these mindset shifts will absolutely help you another mindset don't make fixing yourself a full-time job you know i'm flattered that people like watching my videos and They'll sometimes watch a number of them and get a lot of positive comments about how calming these videos are, how helpful they are, and I'm thrilled and I'm, I'm humbled by that. But if you're watching 10 hours of my videos a day, you're probably putting too much significance and pressure in making this recovery a full-time job. And that includes you folks who are bouncing from Facebook group to Facebook group, to this podcast, to that podcast, and searching YouTube and looking for every possible TMS expert because so far Dan's stuff hasn't worked for me, so I'm going to keep on looking. And what book should I read now? I've only read five mind-body books. There's got to be three more I can read next month. Don't make it a full-time job, folks. Get the concepts down. Understand what creates symptoms. Is that what's going on for you? And then from there... Focus on safety. Reading the 7th and 8th book on TMS is not going to be curative. It's just going to put more and more focus on and convince your brain more and more that I've got this problem. Maybe it's not my body, but now I've got this problem called TMS that I really need to fix, which is going to keep the brain in high vigilance. So, develop an awareness. How am I thinking, acting, and behaving right now? What's my speech like? Am I talking about my symptoms? Am I complaining a lot? Am I thinking about this stuff all day long? Become aware of your thoughts, actions, and behaviors. And if those thoughts, actions, and behaviors are fairly compulsive on trying to figure this stuff out and fix yourself, make a shift. A shift towards what? Safety. And if you're not sure what that means, look up, you know, go to YouTube and search pain, free, you, consistent messages of safety. You'll find it. There's a whole bunch of examples. But be aware of your thoughts, actions, behaviors, speech, and decide to make a shift to something else which will convey more safety to your brain instead of some of our negative thought patterns and negative behaviors and avoidance behaviors which are perpetuating the the brain the brain's perception of danger now i want you to develop an, a mindset of resilience make a decision i'm tough i'm strong i'm capable now many of you would go i am so far from that stuff dan you're nuts but i will tell you <clears throat> having worked with thousands of you in my coaching practice and probably interacted with tens of thousands of people through the internet. People with chronic conditions are some of the strongest, bravest, most resilient people I have ever met. So instead of taking on this weak, I'm frail, I'm easily broken, I don't have any strength, adopt the mindset that you are resilient, you are tough, you are strong. Look at all you've been through. Seriously. The people in this community are some of the strongest, most brave people I have ever met in my life. Because some people who are blessed enough not to have to deal with this stuff have no clue what it takes to get up, deal with this stuff every single day, keep a smile on their face, or maybe not, but then keep on pursuing recovery. You're so brave and, and resilient, you don't even know it. Please give yourself some credit. And maybe if you need to, look at yourself in the mirror and say, you are a badass. You're a fighter. You're a warrior. And if that sounds dangerous, then just say, you're so strong and beautiful and loved. Whatever it takes, create the mindset of resilience, because you have it. You may not give yourself credit for it, but you have it. Another mindset, acceptance. Acceptance of what is, meaning right now. You know, a lot of people are focused on, I should be pain-free by now. I should be symptom-free by now. I don't have it. And they're focused on the gap between where they are right now 
and where they think they should be. Acceptance of where you are right now is super important. Because if you're just resisting where you are right now, guess what your brain's going to perceive? Danger. So please, fighting where you are right now is not a message of safety. It's just going to teach the brain we're in trouble. So accepting. Okay, so today I still have symptoms. Big deal. So what? Whatever. Remember that indifference thing we talked about earlier. Um, start from where you are right now. You know, you might be... You might be wishing you were somewhere different or farther along in this journey. But start from where you are. You're making progress. Baby steps is still progress. Even if you go from laying down in bed to sitting up in bed, that's progress. If you go from, I don't know, barely able to walk across the living room to making a lap around the dining room table, that's progress. Start from where you are. Be good with that because you know you're on the right path. You're moving in the right direction. You've got all the tips, tools, tactics, knowledge, belief to really get better. So start from where you are. Also, don't compare yourself to others. That's key. Because if you're comparing yourself to others and their journey and the fact that they may be farther ahead or they may be doing somewhat better than you, that comparison is really not going to help you. If you're looking at other people's and their progress, I'm going to really encourage you to look at others' success as inspiration on what's possible, what's possible for you, what you're going to do, what you're in the process of doing, and the direction you're moving. Because I know I've had people tell me, Dan, I can't watch these success stories. They just piss me off. Don't compare yourself to others, folks. Use others' success and progress as inspiration, as a model and example for what you, you, you can do, right? Which is the last point. Have the mindset that says, I can and will do this. I can and will recover. Why? Because I'm not broken in the first place. I just got to consistently give messages of safety to this scared, overprotective brain that's operating on misinformation and fear. You're not broken, folks. You just thought you were. And I used thought in the past tense because you just thought you were. You know you're not broken anymore. You're in the right place, folks. This stuff works. I can assure you of that. So in celebration of five years of daily videos, I really wanted to do a massive mindset video for you. I hope you found it useful. Um, what I'll probably try to do is post these uh, 30 mindset tips in the description of the video. If you're on YouTube, look for it in the description. If you're on Facebook, look for it in the description. Please, folks, take this stuff to heart. This is the way to recover. This stuff works. And that last point, I'm going to reiterate it. You can do this. You will do this. You're in the right place. You're strong. You're capable. You're brave. You're resilient. You're amazing. I love you. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. That'll be five years in one day. So take care, everybody. I love you.